Um, but oftentimes, we have students who work on something and you know, two years later, the code really is in Cambridge, which is very exciting. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we're doing at the Previously Foundation. So the Previously Foundation, for those who don't know, uh, is a non-profit foundation that supports the Previously Project. Um, we are intentionally independent from the Previously Project in that uh, they're two institutionally separate things. And when we first created, well, the first Privacy Foundation was first created, the reason it was set up independently from the project was that it wasn't clear what the relationship between a non-profit uh, and an open source project was. You know, is your non-profit going to get sued? If they get sued and they, they fall apart, will that mean the end of the project? What exactly will happen there? And so these things were set up separately, but I think that this model has worked quite well for us. Um, this is in contrast to some open, open source projects who very much make the structure of their nonprofit part of the way they run the open source project. So if you compare us with, for example, uh, the Apache project, the, uh, the foundation associated with the Apache project is really integral to the way they run the software project. And members of the software project are members of the foundation. So this is quite a, a distinct model that can have some benefits. So we have a board of directors, we have one part-time employee, we try to keep our overhead as low as we can. We have no office, you know, we just uh, we have a board of directors who has monthly teleconferences and helps manage things. Uh, our mission is to support the FreeBSD project and the FreeBSD community. We, uh, we do a whole bunch of different kinds of things, and uh, a lot of these uh, involve our role, what it is a nonprofit foundation does. Uh, we can kind of do two things. We can represent the project in situations where you have to have a legal identity. Uh, sign an NDA uh, to agree to purchase things or uh, provide things. Uh, we help to provide support for license analysis, what is the interaction between licenses. Uh, we negotiate NDAs. There have been several occasions where, uh, as a result of us being able to sign agreements with hardware companies, we can get specifications, uh, we can do that kind of thing for the project, things where individuals have a little less standing in society and we need a formal organization. Um, we also collect and distribute money. Uh, and this is one of the most useful things you can do with the foundation. You like tax-free donations in the U.S. Uh, and then you can go off and spend the money. So we, uh, we purchase hardware for the project, we buy hardware so we previously developed if you need it. Uh, we also run um, at least one cluster uh, of previous boxes, which is almost entirely donated hardware or hardware the foundation's purchase. Uh, and this is a, a useful function as well. Recently, we've started doing a bit more of funded development. Historically, we have funded a number of uh, software development projects, but last year, we've really done a lot more of that. So I'll talk to you about that more moment. I guess one of the key points, though, is that we are supported entirely by donations. Uh, we do not have a large endowment that pays our operating costs. We pay our operating costs out of donations every year. Uh, and although we are working to try and improve that situation, uh, we really do look for your donations. And I'll tell you a little bit more about, about how that is working out. So what are we about to? Uh, every year, we support a number of conferences. Uh, we support conferences in two different ways. Um, we provide a block grant to the conference to help them pay for their general conference costs. It's entirely up to them how they spend the money. Uh, oftentimes, we've encouraged them to spend it on travel for speakers uh, to make sure the venue is arranged properly to help promote the conference and so on. Um, we also support conferences by providing travel grants to previously developers to help them make it to the conference. Uh, in the last year, I think, you know, about 17, probably by the end of the year, we 20 travel grants to previously developers to send them to events. Uh, both BSD conferences, but also general conferences, we like to get people to stand at meetings uh, we help people get to uh, open source conferences or Linux computing supercomputing conferences. Uh, and that serves a very useful function. Many FreeBSD developers work on FreeBSD in their own time. Um, they are not compensated for doing that, or if they are compensated for some of it, it doesn't include the ability to run off to conferences seven times a year. So we think it's really important we get developers in the same place, and we can really help do that with travel runs. It's a very effective program, I think. Uh, we help to sponsor and run developer summits. Uh, we've done quite a bit of that in the last year. Uh, as I mentioned, we help to uh, manage and, uh, and contribute to running of clusters. One of our projects is the NetPerf cluster, which is hosted at Centex in Canada. Uh, this is where all of the network performance work takes place. Um, <coughs> recently, I helped us solicit the donation of two 32 core systems. Uh, one of those is a place at the Centex cluster. Uh, but we also have a 10 gigabits uh, test beds out there with which that uh, Cisco donated, and hardware, a number of other companies donated. Uh, and this is a really important role for us that we can help get all these donations together and gather them and manage them and try to turn them into significant resources available to the project as a whole. And of course, one of the neat things about working on operating systems is that these things can be done remotely. So users can check out boxes in the network and make them use their own testing. So several of the things we've seen talked about in the last few days were done on that. Um, Hubble used our cluster quite a bit of ZMS related testing. Uh, a lot of the network performance work happens there uh, and so on. So it's quite an exciting thing to work on. 
Uh, we've also been recently involved in continuity planning for the FreeBSD project. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, this is California, there are earthquakes, um, there are also uh, business eventualities, uh, and all kinds of other things that can affect the continuity of operation of an open source project. Uh, we were recently involved in uh, talking very closely with NetApp and working with NetApp to get a new file donated that we have located offsite in our Syntax cluster. Um, so we have a complete offsite backup for this uh, cluster uh, running in a pretty geographically distinct location. Now you could argue about how independent candidates from the United States, but I think you know, if the United States comes to an end, there'll be bigger things to worry about. But I think certainly it's geographically distinct, and in terms of uh, corporate involvement in management, it's also completely distinct, which is, which is quite important. A project we've been involved in for a long time is funding Java development uh, and Java certification. Uh, we are continuing to do that with some new Java releases this year, uh, and we keep on doing that. Uh, one of the things that's going on in the Java world is the GPL and uh, the Java implementation. This seems not yet to have had sufficient effect that we don't still have to fund uh, uh, certification. That's another area where it's important to have a foundation because there are non disclosure agreements involved, uh, licenses to distribute Java binaries, uh, and that's something that you couldn't really do without a foundation. One of the development projects we've been involved in for a few years now is the virtualized network stack, uh, which is in the process of appearing for BC8, uh, which is something we haven't had a presentation about here. Um, but basically, this allows you to create multiple instances of your network stack in a single instance of the operating system. So this gives jails the ability to have their own firewalls and all kinds of other things, which is a, a very exciting project and something that uh, we have co-funded with NLNet uh, in collaboration, uh, which is another thing you can do if you're a nonprofit. Um, and recently we started a new funded grant program to allow developers to apply to us for sort of micro-grants to work on specific projects. And we announced the first of these, uh, my summer co-student from this most recent summer, uh, Edward Nacarella, who will be working on resilience in the uh, presence of a disk that has been removed for our USB and file system stack, uh, which is pretty exciting work with people who've asked us to work on for a long time. Uh, but we will be announcing two more grant recipients, hopefully in the next month, um, working in a variety of areas of the system, so it's quite a neat program. Uh, and it's a good way to, to kind of make things that, that, so one of the things you can do with the foundation is you can try and meet the needs of large corporate consumers of FreeBSD that they aren't very good at meeting themselves, right? There are certain sort of communal activities, infrastructure pieces that are useful to everyone, but nobody really wants to pay for these things to happen. So we can kind of help fill that need to fund some of these smaller projects. So let's talk about fundraising. So let's talk about funding developers, that's quite an extensive activity. Um, so we actually had an excellent fundraising uh, year last year, uh, in 2007. Uh, we say it raised over $400,000 to support the previous project. We were very, very excited about that. <laughs> we uh, moved our 2006 number, that's a really impressive improvement. Now, some of that, some of that very high numbers because donations that were intended to come in 2006 slipped a few months in 2007. But still, if we could have the same thing happen this year, that would really be great too. Um, as you can see, we, we actually, prior to 2007, we had a very informal budgeting process where we kind of looked at how much money we had, and then we said, okay, what do we want to do now? And if people came to us and asked for money, they'd say, well, can we afford that? Well, as of 2007, we have a formal budgeting process, uh, and we budgeted to spend about $150,000 last year. Uh, we ended up spending a little bit less than that because bills came in the next fiscal year, but that's fine. Uh, and we actually, uh, with that in mind, significantly increased our budget uh, this year. Uh, you can see from the graph, uh, we're not quite there on fundraising yet. Uh, we currently have fundraising for this year. It doesn't cover our entire budget for this year. Um, and we would like to obviously keep raising money so we can put stuff in the bank and help fund operational costs out of investments, which would be really great. So I thought I'd take a moment to recognize some of the large owners. Um, the most significant uh, new donor in the last couple of years is NetApp, who made a really significant financial contribution to the previous project. And I think we should really uh, we should take a moment to thank them for that. Um, <laughs> Uh, and of course, we have many other uh, significant corporate donors uh, who have obviously many of these have been involved in the previous year project for a long time. Uh, and I should point out Google there. Google's there in large part because of uh, donations made as a result of uh, Summer of Code. Right? So the previous year foundation gets yeah, so a moderate sized donation for every student uh, who goes through the Summer of Code program. And as it turns out, we have a lot of students who go through the Summer of Code program, so that is a lot of amount of money. Uh, I should mention also that there are a lot of uh, companies that donate to FreeBSD Foundation in the form of hardware, and they don't appear uh, in our donations list, but companies like Cisco, uh, NetApp again, because of the recent file donation, uh, have made significant contributions uh, through that as well. 
So a few years ago, you may remember in 2004, we sent out this email at the end of the year saying, you know, please, we need as many different donors as possible because in order to retain our nonprofit status as a publicly supported and publicly funded organization, a charity, if you will, um, we need to have lots of different donors. We can't just have a few large corporate donors. And so we did that, and we were enormously successful. Uh, if you look at 2004, we had over a thousand different donors in the same year making donations. This is, this is really important. Well, we have a sliding window on how we evaluate uh, whether we're publicly supported or not. And uh, we've had a lot of large individual donations from companies, which we really appreciate. Um, but that does mean we're looking at less publicly supported than we were before, um, because a significant part of our donated income is from a small number of organizations. So what we would like to do for the end of this year is get as many new donors as we possibly can to make donations of any size. Obviously, large is good, but you know, small is also good um, to make donations to the project. Uh, to the foundation, we have a uh, goal of getting a thousand different donors this year. We're at 266 currently, so we have a little ways to go uh, in the next month and a half. Now, this is not unusual because we usually do a large fundraising drive at the end of the year, which will kick off on Monday. We'll send out some emails to previously announced us talking about some of the stuff that's going on and encouraging you to make a donation. Uh, but this is me asking you for money, so we're paying attention. Uh, but I will say we've actually been very successful in raising funds for and as I think you can see, in the last few years, the foundation has become much more active. We have a lot more going on. And we were able to start the new uh, funded development project program largely because we had such a good fundraising program last year. I mean, if you look at our sort of uh, budget revision, uh, we've really increased our budget to try and do more. Uh, and if you look at 2006, you know, we raised a lot less money than we spent, in part because we wanted to grow our capacity as a foundation to do new and interesting work. Um, so we have to keep growing our fundraising to match that. Uh, but I think the results are pretty good. Um, so, we want to do something new. Um, so, the FreeBSD Foundation and the FreeBSD Core Team got together, uh, I guess, uh, maybe six months ago, and decided that we really would like to recognize the humans in the community and came up with a pretty long list because it turns out almost everyone in the FreeBSD community uh, contributes a lot to it, right? If, you're, if you turn up on the list regularly and you do stuff, then, uh, then you get noticed. Um, but a few people, I think, may have been a little unrecognized. Uh, so, if I could ask uh, David Walsfield, who I see sitting over there, turning slightly redder as the conversation goes on, uh, to come up here uh, on the stage, and also Chris Kenaway. Here. Yeah. See this morning. Uh, we have just a small token gift for each of you to thank you. So, uh, David Walsko is the guy behind the scenes who actually answers the postmaster email within 30 minutes most of the time. But who reads the postmaster mailbox anymore for anything else? But um, we have for you a FreeBSD uh, uh, fleece vest. <laughs> right, well, that's fine too. <laughs> Uh, and one sort of Chris. Chris, of course, has um, worked for me for a very long time. He's been our security officer in the past, but he's also been a member of the port manager team. Uh, he's done a lot of work with performance and scalability in the last few years. If you look at our seven benchmarks, and you've sort of seen these amazing you know, performance curves where we zip off into the sky, and certain other operating systems don't. Um, Chris can take a lot of responsibility for that. Uh, not because he breaks other people's systems, but uh, that's where they are. We won't talk about that anymore. Uh, so if you give both a hand, I think we really do appreciate it. So, uh, in conclusion, um, the FreeBSD Foundation, we'd like to think, plays a critical role in supporting FreeBSD project. I think you can argue that increasingly we do. I think we started the foundation in 2000, you know, it, there were a lot of open questions. What does a foundation do for a project? How do you do this fundraising thing for open source? How can you convince people that this is a good idea? I think we have succeeded in doing that. Uh, but this is only possible because of your donation. So, of course, uh, it would help us a lot if you contribute to making those graphs even bigger and better so I can do this again next year and say, wow, isn't that amazing? Uh, you can find all the information you need, uh, including our nonprofit paperwork, uh, news letters, and what we're up to, uh, and also the grant request form. If you are looking for money to help support a conference, uh, you want to travel to a conference and you're a FreeBSD developer, or an active member of the community, you want to go do some advocacy work, uh, we fund both developers to travel and non developers uh, who are active in the community, so we really want to help make that possible. Thanks very much. You mentioned that you actually signed NDAs. Yes. Hardware documentation. Yes, that's right. And also for Java, correct? Right? I'm sorry, for and also for Java. 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 You oh, Java. Java. Yes, 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 that's right. Um, when you sign NDAs to develop new drivers for hardware, um, what happens with the documentation that you get? Are you able to redistribute it? 
Um, usually what happens is it's kind of like the relationship between a company and an employee. So we're able to negotiate agreements with companies who provide documentation and so on. Uh, and then we will have an individual NDA uh, with the developer who's involved. But the companies who provide this information are much more comfortable dealing with uh, a significant legal entity uh, while they can sue and, and things like that. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. What we do is we try to avoid that scenario. Uh, I think we've done that pretty successfully so far. So, yeah. That's, um, so once the code is written, then no one else can work on it. No, that's not necessarily the case. So there were lots of companies. Well, hardware companies are, are these very strange institutions, right? The, the, they believe that it's possible to have open source drivers and closed source documentation, right? That you can you cannot provide the specs on your hardware to people. We have to provide the source code, and no one will be able to tell what your driver, your driver does. I know. Uh, but that is a frequent arrangement. It is often the case that you get specs under NDA, but you were allowed to release a device prior to open source, and, and we do that all the time. So. Um, yeah, but once you once you release the um, the drivers as open source, no one else can work in, on them without the specifications. Now, this is no different than most of the other drivers that exist in open source, right? Lots of device drivers are written by companies who have internal access to data, or, or, or get it through, or get it through relationships that their companies have with other companies. Or for all I know, they steal the documentation. But it is not unusual for, for this kind of arrangement to present. I don't think it's ideal, right? I would much rather see the documentation released, but sometimes that's difficult. We'd rather have the driver than not have the driver. Okay. But certainly, a condition of the whole range is that the driver be released as open source and be DCS license. We do not do uh, close source drivers as well. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you.